Strategy Gamers, this is Corporal Kindle signing back on for episode three of uh, Stars and Shadows Tinkers on Hard. Okay, so let's get the screen back up. Go back in the options. I'm going to go back to the full screen mode right where I left off. Click off the options and going back. So, we're starting to get a little bit of problems going on here now. These orphans are moving in. I can't believe these guys are already sending a colony ship towards my system. That's really irritating. Okay, but I did. I did develop my, my colony ship. It was constructed. Which, so, now, uh, it was constructed, by the way. My, my population didn't increase, it decreased back to 8.2. That's one thing I didn't notice. It, they, it took a, a million people off to put in the colony ship. So the colony ship actually has a million people. And we're going to send it to Aldebaran. They're going to colonize Al Gore. Okay, blast off. All right, so now what we got is we got the asteroid outpost, which I was going to put in Difta. Now these guys are already moving in on my on me it's just that's just that just is not gonna hold i'm not i'm not at all happy about that Look if there's some way can it's two turns off how far am i uh ship i wonder if i can just tell them to go away three turns oh god it's three turns i'm gonna send my ship there anyway see if i can intercept them somehow uh <coughs> discourage them from from going there I really need to start getting combat ships I'm seeing a lot of flight around here we got another exploration ship up here they got a colony ship and they must have built that, that other exploration ship oh here it is isn't it it's moving towards so they got two 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 ships and a colony ship that I can see all right so we're working on the asteroid outpost the machine altar um I'm getting plus 12 science now, so my Pell must have grown again. What do we got? 4.6? 4.6 times 1? That's, well, that's 4 point, 4, call it 4.67, because 4.678, let's call that 4.68. 4.68 plus 1 times 2.25. That is 0.25, 1.25. 1.1 1 .1 times 0 0.25. 1.1 .1 times 0 0.25. What exactly is that? 1.1 1 .1 times 0 0.25. 0 0.275. 0 0.275 plus 4.68. 4.955. 4 4.9. 4.9. Well, they must have rounded that again, didn't they? 5. They rounded 4.9 up to 5, so I'm getting I'm getting 5. It did it did go up again. Plus 5 in Pell, plus 2 in Dizabix. All right, so it, it went up again. That's nice. I like that. I do like that. Those Pell people are really pumping out a lot of science for me without even without a lab so far. Okay. So what is what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? How far am I from the machine altar in Shidar? 12 more turns. Still need a, I need a lot of gold. I don't plan to rush buying it. So, let's go. Let's generate a turn. Okay. What do we got? These people are going to be there in one turn. I got two turns for my thing. I did get a tech tech. All right. I got a tech. My tech was developed. We've developed advanced metallurgy. Light cruiser destroyers. Choose our next research. All right, since these guys are right in right in my backyard, I'm gonna have to start thinking seriously about um, getting some armament going on here. Lasers, mass drivers, lasers, lasers one to ten, and get defense lasers one to three. Basic weapon one to three. P P D P D is point defense. Point defense are is better against smaller things like. Uh, Shuttles, fighters, bombers, small ships, missiles. You can shoot missiles with PD. Mass drivers have SP, which is, is again, this is really nice. SP is shield piercing. It'll go right through shields without without being affected by the shield. 
It's one of those small things that I kind of like. This is five turns. Of course, the point defense is also very nice when you're dealing with small, uh, small things. Mass drivers have point defense too, but I think you have to get another. Uh, they have to be upgraded to the next the next level somehow. I'm not sure what that is. I mean, what well, what the next level is? Is it um, heavy drivers? Yes, seal piercing, coil guns, heavy hulls, rail guns. Real guns, real guns, shield piercing. That's that will be a nice thing. So, what should I get? Lasers, mass drivers, lasers, mass drivers, lasers. <laughs> I, uh, it's kind of a toss up. I like to have the point defense one to ten, one to three. The mass drivers do six to nine, and they're shield piercing. So, I, I probably need to go with that. But, you know, once five turns, seven turns, why don't we go? I mean, it's 87 turns. That one is 65 turns. We'll just, what the hell, we'll go with the mass drivers for now. Maybe I'll pick up small craft next time. Interceptors, 96 with the 80% lead, uh, leader discount. But I don't think I can really put those on anything. Small craft, you know, you have to get a, a special spot, I think, to put them on a, home, a hangar or something. Okay, so we'll stick with the mass drivers for now. That'll be my next research. And sign off. Seven turns, 80, 80 beakers. Okay. So I'm getting 12 a turn now. Plus nine. Oh, why did this go down to plus nine? Because I'm actually building a ship, ain't I? Yeah, I'm building the asteroid outpost. So that's eating up a lot of the minerals. And exactly how how is that working? Why is this is eating up 28 a turn? I've got I'm developing 24. Yeah, 24 from this the uh, four mines times six is 24. This costs a total of 28. It takes two turns, so it's going to be what 14 a turn? 14 14 plus nine is 27. Yeah, there's probably a fraction there. It's probably the 28 is probably divided amongst the however many turns it takes. It does it cost 28 to build an asteroid. Well, some of it was rolled over from the uh, prior production, so I don't know how much of that is left. If it costs 28, if there's 28 left over and it takes two turns, that means that there's 28 divided by 2 is 14 each turn. And I'm gaining 24. 24 minus 14 is 10. So there's probably a fraction somehow that's reducing it to 9 instead of 10. Guessing. Not quite, you know, 28. There's probably a fraction there. Anyway, I'm in the plus. So that's all that really matters. i got a nice little stockpile going on right now. Um... Let's go. So let's go back. Let's get to the to the point where I can colonize um, Aldebaran. Click the turn. Turn 11, 25. 25 turns into the game. And next turn. Okay, so they... Wow, they colonized that quick, didn't they? They just moved in and just took Difter right away, didn't they? They took that little small planet, one out of six. Well, one out of six. Remember, it was one out of... I think it was one out of two. It was one out of two for me. They can put a lot more, more people on these ice ball worlds. So that's why it's one out of six instead of one out of two. Hmm, I'm going to have to think about taking this. I mean, that's just... I don't like... I don't I didn't want them that close to my uh, my main worlds. You know, I'm thinking... You know, I'm thinking I'm going to have to start building up a combat force this early. Oh. Uh, all right, let's get the colony ship going. One turn, I'm going to be at Difta. I don't going to be able to do anything. Well, they're moving around. Now they got now their fuel range has expanded. So they're going to be able to probably call, I mean, search all these other places. All my places, that is. So we got a flag. Why well, we got a flag cuz my colony ship arrived. So the colony colonizing when a colony ship arrives at a, co a system with a colonizable world, you see a flag. So we got this flag. It's going to ask for which one to colonize. Well, there's only one option. Everything else is grayed out. And you can see the colonize option down here. And this is the mineral-rich world that had the Yetis, the native population. So we're going to 
Colonize. All right. Colonized Al Gore. All right. New colony ship established in Al Gore. The settlement awaits your orders. Okay, let's go to the settlement. Set production. What do we got? Okay. Well, we can click on these people now. The Al Gore Al Goreans. They got one shield and zero blue faces. I'm I don't know. I guess I'm guessing the red shield is probably some kind of unhappiness level and the blue is probably happiness. Happiness, unhappiness. But we got a we got a question mark, so let's just click on that. Racial traits. Primitive, friendly, capricious. They got 0.5 their yield is 0.5 coins, two wrenches, zero. Well, they don't get any research, do they? One food. So these people are going to be taking food. Of course, we had to build a farm on this planet. Or they sh I should say they start with a farm on this planet because I just colonized it. Well, that's kind of a bummer. That's going to be uh, <clears throat> the farm generates food. This generates four, right? I'm guessing uh, Al Gore one has Al Gore has one farm, which produces four. Hence, I got the plus four up here. The farm is fully staffed. All right, building an additional farm would increase production by plus four corn. Well, I don't want to build any more farms. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to waste waste spaces on farms. Um, the Algorians three. They got three, because I got three people. Three people, they each build their yield is one corn, right? One corn, three times one is plus three. So their yield for the corn is three. They got a farm which generates four, I think. Let me go back. Is that what the farm generated? Farm. The, yeah, the farm generated four, right? Four plus three. Plus three for what the peoples are generating, the farmers, because three times three times one is three, plus four for the farm is seven. Three plus four minus three, that's their upkeep. And in this case, I wouldn't call it upkeep. I would call it their, their, how much of the food they're eating per turn. So they're eating three. So I get a total of four. So as these people start growing, they're going to need more food. Which is a bummer because it's gonna force me to want to waste. I don't want to waste space on um, on um, I really don't not on food. So what I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna do is well the first thing I'm gonna build is set production. We know we gotta build a a machine altar. It's gonna be the number one thing. Twenty five turns. So this thing is a little faster to produce because as you remember on the other planet with the Pell people they only had a point five a point five I started off with five wrenches on that planet this planet I got nine because I'm getting four for my one guy who's got a yield of four one times four is four these guys develop three times uh it was a two 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 for the wrenches three times two is six six was worth ten well I got nine I don't know why there's nine and not ten um Three times two is six. It is six. It's a good question. Why is it? Why is it not? Why is it nine and not ten? Are they disgruntled or something? <laughs> no morale issues. Um. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see what these traits are. Maybe the answer is up here. Primitive. These colonists are from a pre-tech culture. They can be transported between worlds, but will not populate colony ships well not populate colony ships and they do not receive combat bonuses from tech advancements like approved armor or shields okay so they can't be put on a colony ship what else do we got primitive friendly these colonists enjoy contact with alien and never suffer from the alien rulers morale penalty okay capricious Colonists are very easily offended. Any negative morale will have double the normal effect. Okay, well, that stinks. Okay, so the red face thing is a morale effect. I'm assuming red is bad. 
So they got one um, one red shield, zero blue. Well, again, I'm assuming that's some kind of unhappiness and happiness. So they're a little bit more unhappy than they are happy. Maybe that's why it's that nine instead of ten. Um, well, here we go. Algorian six. Tinker's three. Or right, I am getting six for the Algorians, but I'm only getting three instead of four. Okay. And why is that? Why am I only getting three for my guys? The Tinkers have made them so blah, 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 or make everything in the event called Dizabooks, whether there's a machine is weird. Populate summary for Al Gore large. Growth rate is low. Base growth rate is low. Okay, that's why I only got 10. I got a red shield up here, too. Additional allowed, 6-2. Maximum allowed, 7-2. Morale, 0. No morale issues. Okay, but I'm only getting 3 for the production for some reason. This planet lacks a machine altar. Okay. It does lack a machine. I got one in the queue. 0.5 and 3. I'm getting 3.5. I'm not getting 2.5 science. Hmm. Okay, so my guy's a little bit lower than normal for some reason. Um, what could be that reason? They're on a glacier world, which is not their normal or not a good world that they could be on. The other world was a great, was a garden world. Maybe it's not an optimal uh, an optimal world for them. I don't know. Disconnected. Oh, what is this? What the hell is this being? Disconnected. Let's click on that. Disconnected. Populations that have been, have been harmonized by the Tinkers require an active communication to the machine god Dizabix to maintain their state of blissful pro uh, productivity. For planet-bound populations, this means that they must be on a planet with a machine altar, and they must be Tinker subjects. Harmonized populations of planets without an altar or planets controlled by non-Tinkers become disconnected. Okay, so I'm on a planet with... I don't have a machine altar because it's in the queue, so I'm disconnected? Disconnected Tinkers are less effective laborers. Minus one. Ah, there is. So there's the answer. I got a minus one wrench because I'm disconnected, but remain immune to the effects of morale. Any other harmonized will lose its immunity to morale when disconnected and introduce the bubble or unrest and rebellion. Well, that's interesting. Well, that just didn't happen in the other world, though, the Pell world. As I remember, I landed on it, and I, uh, I had to build my first altar, remember? It, was, it took 45 turns, but they weren't disconnected. That's interesting. I wonder why they weren't, but these people are. Hmm. That is interesting. Don't know. They were they. So when I first colonized Shidar, they were they had their full four output for my guys, but these people don't because they don't have the machine altar or the first machine. I have to build a machine altar before I get four from my guys. Uh, harmonize these. These cannot the harmonized cannot be applied to Algorians. What is that? It cannot be applied to Algorians. Well, that kind of stinks. They uh, the uh, I couldn't apply it to the Pell either. Let's go back to the the Pell. Click on them. Harmonized properties cannot be applied to Pell. Okay, so I can't uh, can't harmonize Pell. I can't I can't harmonize the these guys either so I don't know something something's going on with those two races that I can't harmonize them plants okay a plant race and a yeti race so the, apparently the harmonized special ability is only limited to certain races or you know people in the game and those two not being one of them or among them I should say so let's go back to Pell still building the machine altar. Nine nine turns left for the Pell machine altar. Pell was the planet I was planning on building the uh that was where I was gonna build the the whatchamacallit, the colonize the other planet. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the queue. Colonize Sheet Earthy, right? The uh <clears throat> the planet's gonna be my lab world. So I'm just gonna go ahead and queue that for the time being. Go 
go to my now other planet, Al Gore. So I'm I'm starting off with an altar. It takes 25 turns. It's not too bad. 25 is definitely better than 45. And what should I queue here? Well, well, I'll just start with the altar. And think from there. It takes that is a long time. 25. And Dizabix. Oh, I don't have anything. I must have completed my uh my thing on Dizabix. Did I? Did I? What did I have? Oh, I had my uh right. I had my I got my my ship, my asteroid outpost ship. Well, first of all, I'm gonna go ahead. Let me click on this ship information. So I got my asteroid outpost ship. It's got a fuel depot, nuclear warp, lane amplifier. So it's got the additional plus one um, parsec range. Chondrite maneuvering engine. Okay, and fuel otherwise doesn't have anything special, but it does give me the um, the ability to expend my my range. That's what the asteroid outpost. These outpost things do. You put them around a and a planet, and they they extend your fuel range, like I showed you with these, the um, the ranges. I got three overlapping circles. One, two, this one's from Aldebaran. One from my original Eye of Dizabix, and the Shidara system. So there's three circles or my fuel ranges, and now they've all been added together to extend my range. I can now go to this red star. Good. I don't have Difta. If I added Difta to it, which I wanted to do, it would extend my range further. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to move my asteroid. I am going to move my asteroid outpost to this, to Difta, because I can probably put it around this, uh, one of these other planets, even if I can't put it in this planet that they took from under me. I can put it on the, the moon or the, uh, the gas giant. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to my construction completed in Dizabix. All right, now we need to think about it. We have, we have constructed our Belfast Mobile, Archimandrite, Archimandrite. This unit is pleased to report that we have finished production of an asteroid outpost. The advantage of this type of installation is that it can be relocated like any other starship and deployed in orbit if any planet is necessary. To deploy the asteroid is a at a planet, order the vessel to enter orbit from the ship and select the desired planet within the star system. Once in orbit, any station modules will then operate normally. Any mobile station can dispute or to leave orbit at any time, though any station modules aboard will cease to function as soon as the vessel leaves orbit. Okay, so the thing that's different from these mobile uh, stations, I'll close, the difference from these mobile state, mobile outposts for the normal outpost. The normal outposts, you just, you build them. They're like a, you know, like like a building or something, you know, an outpost, a literal outpost. These are mobile outposts. You can actually move them around like a ship. On a normal outpost, you move it to where you're going to outpost it, and, it's, and that's just there. It's just there permanently until you scrap it or not. And there's nothing wrong with that, but mobile outposts, certainly having one that can move around, it's nicer. I don't have to build as many outposts just if you use them strategically, I guess. Of course, they're weak. They didn't have, as you remember, didn't have any uh, weapons on it. So, what's, I'm now going to move my explorer. Now that my range has increased, I can go to this red uh, dwarf right here. It's unexplored red dwarf. Six turns. 4.2 PC parsecs. So, let's move it there. Okay. And now let's set my construction. Okay, let's start thinking. Okay, we we did that. We can dismiss the mobile station. We know we know about that now. We'll go to the, the go to the planet. Okay, let's think. What should I what should I build? We have none. Let's click on the selection. What I really need is another colony ship. Uh, <clears throat> I'll think about this. An asteroid outpost, research, trade, manufacture population. Um, light crew. Well, I can't. I got. Did I, I must have got my light cruiser tech. Did I get that tech? Oh, I did. Blah. <laughs> Duh. I got my light cruiser. That's so all. I got destroyers and light cruisers now. Missile destroyer. That's interesting. Colony ship, transport troop ship, tanks refit. What should I build? Um. You know what? I think for I, I would like to build a cruiser and destroyer. The only thing is, I want to get a little bit more advanced weapons first before I really start queuing these things up. 
uh, what I should, probably should build. I can use a transport. I I got 10 of 12, right? Because I got 3. 10, 12 now. We got 2 in the... We have 2 ships in the trade pool, which produce 10. 0 is needed to transport food, right? Because the, the one colony I have that needs food, the Yetis, they have their own... Their planet produces food, so I don't have to move any food there. The remaining 10 are intended to... 10 of 12 available trade routes of active. 10 of 12. That means... Or 10... That's, that would be better worded as 10 cargo space of 12 cargo space or of unavailable trade routes are active. Build a market or found colonies increase outputs. Two are available for transport. Two ships are available. Two, two ships, okay, are available for colonists. If I wanted to move a colonist from a planet to a planet, which is a good thing to do when you're trying to build population, as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to... Uh, transports are pretty cheap. I can queue one of them. It's only two turns. What should I queue something immediately after? You know what? I'm, I'm thinking probably a good idea would be to actually queue some manufacture, some population. I can put six more people on this planet. I can use some of my eat. And uh, in this game, they had they had for this this race, the Tinkers, they have manufacture population. The other races that require food. They build housing. The difference between these two is when they build housing for the other races, it actually it will increase your growth rate. I think it doubles it, but it also doubles the amount of food that's consumed. Since this is a cybernetic race, I'm guessing that it's going to double my growth rate, but double my the amount of um, minerals that are used. And it might be a good idea to do that to just, you know, for get this up to, say, 10 or something. Get my population up to 10. I don't think that'll take very long to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for a few, just a couple of turns to get some uh, population. Manufacture some more cyborg entities. So after all, my, my, my growth rate is lower than others, so I need more of my own people. So I'll do that for, uh, you know, just a few turns. I'm not going to do that too long. Just enough just to boot up, pump out a couple more population units. Get up to, say, 10. We'll see what that does. All right. Okay. So, here we go. I'm back up to 11. Well, what is that? A plus one surplus coin. Nine in taxes, 10 in trade. I'm getting a little more taxes, right? That's got to be for the, uh, the, the Yeti people. Now, I got 3 million of these guys, and they're generating 0 0.5, so that's 1.5. 1 1.5 1 plus my guy that landed. 1.5 and 0.5, though that's 1. It's only showing up as 1, though. And why is that? Is that? Am I reduced due to being disconnected? Probably because I'm disconnected is reducing everything. Well, it says that it's just uh, laborers that are reduced. Oh, oh, because I got a building. Duh, I do have two. Two minus my one upkeep cost, right? Right here. So I got improvements minus one. Net income is two. Cause my taxes minus one for my building is one. So I'm gaining one from this colony due to the farm that was on the on the colony. Okay, so let's click that off. So the farm is costing me one. So that moved me back up to eleven. Despite the fact I got two ships now. Two minus one ships. Plus ten, plus nine taxes. Minus one ship, minus eight building. Well, I'm only getting a minus one, even though I have two ships. So why is that? Is this, does this cost anything to upkeep? Ship information. Disassemble. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't cost anything to upkeep. That's nice. Zero upkeep. Cool. Asteroid outposts. No upkeep. That's a nice little boon. I don't have to waste money. Waste money um, supporting it. Might be worthwhile having two of them then. Since I don't have to... Since they don't cost me upkeep. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to do for now. So everything's, everything's being built or is under construction. So let's click another turn. Turn. Okay, so these little bugs are again at my Shidor. So they've... they've, they've 
Oh, there's the bell. It's 30 minutes already. Jeez, the time goes quick. So they've scanned three of my systems already. I don't like that. I haven't found any of theirs, and they, they kind of know they know what I got. That's not that. For some reason, I don't think that's a very good omen, you know. <laughs> you know, they're, they're seeing me, but I'm not seeing them. You know, there's a, um, you know, being aware of what your enemy is and not knowing what, what your, them being aware of me, me not being aware of them is, is not good. All right, so that was the stopping point. I'm going to go ahead and, and stop here for the 30-minute period. So we're going to go to options. Take my full screen back to minimize mode. So this was episode. This was episode three, and this is Corporal Kindle signing off. Till next time. See you later. All right. Take